How you going guys and girls and welcome to the channel. So this episode is just going to be part one of the series. I'm going to do another part in this just because this one was sort of getting a little bit too long. Um, this part is just going to be actually removing the wheel tub and rail notching. So in the next episode we, we will be doing the reinforcements of the rails and putting the strength back and doing the infill pieces and all that sort of um, all that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, if you like this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and um, yeah, hope you enjoy it. Cheers. We are going to be getting stuck into the HZ sedan today, doing the tub job. Um, so yeah, let's get to it and I'll show you what it's all about. Alrighty, so here she is, all mounted on the trolley, um, as you've seen probably in the other videos. I've already got one side, um, already cut the suit with the tub out and stuff like that, uh, with the 325 fitted. So I'm really happy with the clearances and stuff like that and how everything's going along. So I'm basically just going to be repeating um, everything up until that stage on the driver's side now, which is slightly different because that wheel tub is shorter than this side. Um, I'll probably explain it a little bit um, later on about why that is. But yeah, basically what's on this side is what we're going to be doing to this side. So obviously I'm going to pull the rear quarter off just because they're only screwed on still. Um, and then I'll go ahead at undoing all the spot welds um, for this half of the tub, and then I'll get that removed um, along with the boot mount brace, and then I'll go about moving this part of the tub, which on this side, I'll need to do some unpicking on the dog leg. Not sure how much of that I'm actually gonna keep. Um, I did just make another one for the other side, but this one's not too bad. Um, it's got a little bit of a dent just there, but without the, the wheel arch there, I should be able to knock that out pretty easily. Um, the rust isn't so serious on this side. Um, someone had cut the other side. Um, thankfully, they've left this one untouched. Um, and yeah, also going to be rolling the wheel arch lip and um, yeah, doing the, uh, the mods to the rail or the start of them anyway, just to, to, to get the clearance. Um, and then, yeah. Hopefully that explains it all. Obviously, I'll, um, I'm going to show all of this in, in greater detail, but yeah, this is sort of just more of an introduction, if anything. But um, yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to it. So um, yeah, let's get to it. All right, so with the quarter panel removed, I don't think I've touched on this before. Um, I refer to this side as the long wheel tub because it has the recess for the wagon filling neck. So it doesn't matter if you've got a sedan, coupe, wagon, statesman, ute, panel van, they all use this part of the wheel tub. Um, it's only the inner half that is different between the models because obviously this part here is a part of this structure here which then comes up and makes your back window assembly um, and then yeah your dog leg which is this part joins onto that. So um, yeah, if you ever see people saying, oh, I can't fit that wheel because my car's a coupe and yours is a sedan, well, no, that's not true because yeah, th this part is the same. Um, it's basically just this part that's different between coupe and sedan and, um, and statesman. The inner half is slightly different or it's a bit more different on a, um, on a wagon, a ute and a panel van. Um, just yeah, hopefully that clears up a few things. Anyway, now that we've got that nonsense out of the way, we can start cleaning up inside the wheel tub and finding our spot words and uh, start drilling away. So yeah, hours of fun. All right, so all the drilling's done underneath here anyway. So all of them are done. The tub separated from the rail, separated from the boot hinge mount. I still have to zip him off somewhere, probably 
through here, I reckon. I'll try and get it um, sort of in a, in a real accessible spot so when I go to rejoin it later on, it's not too bad. Um, and yeah, then I'll cut through here. Uh, I have to, hopefully you can see that. Sun's a bit bright. That's better. I'll make a cut through here, and I'm gonna cut through the parcel shelf as well, through here. I'm gonna do a little bit of drilling through here so I can separate that, so I can take all of that off in one piece. Um, similar to that side. And then I've got a little bit of cutting to do here because there's another, there's a bit of a, um, a lip just there. Um, and yeah, then obviously finish the cutting through here. And then, um, and then this half of the wheel tub should come out with some, uh, with some persistence and then I, I can start removing this part of the wheel tub. <laughs> Alrighty, so that tub, or that part of the tub's out, I should say, really. Always find, I can't, I've never been able to really unpick them in this spot really nicely. Um, so I end up usually just chiseling through that because that's sort of where the, um, uh, you have a bit of like a, a seat belt um, mount, I suppose, is what you'd call it. It's sort of double panelled there, so you're, um, when you bite your seat belt through, it doesn't pull through the tub. Um, yeah, obviously you've got some cleanup and stuff to do in here, so it's a big bit of tar. That's nice, no shortage of that stuff. Um, yeah, quite surprised at how easily that part of the tub came out, considering how much of the parcel shelf came with it. So yeah, it was um, really the only spot that was getting held up was a little spot here, these spot welds here that I drew it out, and. Just one little tag that was just here on the back of the tub so yeah now that's out of the way I can um, go along I can undo all the spot welds through here um, they should be all pretty well accessible from the inside of the car 
apart from the ones up until about this point here, I reckon. Um, so yeah, I'll have to do a little bit of clean up underneath. Uh, undo the spot welds around the dog leg and also the ones that go through here. So a little bit of clean up and stuff to do and then, uh, then this part can come out. So yeah, very exciting. lovely morning this morning but anyway I got that half of the tub out that's it laying on the ground just there it was a little bit tricky to uh to unpick around in this area but I know a thing or two about these cars and I've sort of I've learned how they're constructed um that doesn't take away that it was being an absolute turd to uh undo spot welds and stuff in there but like I said I know a little bit about these things and how they're put together so I didn't have too much trouble. It was more or less just separating the spot welds was the hardest part. Um, I am going to need to be doing a bit of work in here by the looks of it because it's uh, pretty crusty in there. Um, that's just coming out of the inner, the the, uh, the sill panel there. So yeah, she's um, she's not looking too flush in there. But I've got brand new sills for this car, so that's fine. Um, it's not a drama. I'll probably just knock off um, a portion of it just so I can open up in and around the back of the dog leg and I can um, uh, tidy up some of these bits here and then um, that'll end up getting a uh, like an infill piece welded in before the tub goes on. So I've already done that on the other side so I'll, um, I'll show you um, later on you know, what that is and, um, and how I've done it. But um, yeah, at the moment, I'm just probably going to tidy up some of this. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this dog leg or not. I might just make another one. That one's pretty haggard. Um, it's not too bad on the inside, but eh, I'd rather it be a new one, I think. Um, we'll see how we're looking for time. But um, yeah, it uh, hasn't come about too bad, all things considered. Um, but yeah, I'll probably I'll get the the bump stop off next, and then I'll clean up the rail and I'll do some measuring and I'll mark it all out and yeah, I'll do that next step. Hopefully you can hear me over all that wind outside. Um, I've got the rail cleaned up. I've removed the lip pretty uh, savagely in some spots, but that's fine because all that will get cut out. Um, obviously cleaned up the rail. Even though I'm going to be cutting this out, I still need it clean just so I can write all my markings and stuff down. Um, I've got to do a, lot of, a bit of measuring. With the verniers of the rail in all the factory spots at the factory width in, um, in a few bits. 
So I'll probably measure from, I'll have to go from here, 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 and another one just here. Hopefully you can see that. Um, all that makes sense. And I like to do that at the factory width um, to start off with, just so then I can subtract um, my 20 mil, which will be around um, the normal thickness that you take away from the spring mount, so around through here. Um, I'm not gonna tell you exactly where it is, but um, yeah, it's, uh, it's around near the spring mount. I can't remember exactly where it is, but I'll know once I start getting into it, I'll, um, I'll know, so. Yeah, I just find that's, um, that's a little bit of an easier way just to take the 20 mil out first, get your cut on your rail straight, and then I can take a little bit further from that to, uh, to get the big fellas over there to fit. So, um, yeah, I'm just gonna go measure my way around the rail in the few points that I've pointed out, and, um, and yeah, then I'll get back to you guys with, um, and I'll show you all my markings and stuff. All right, so I've just marked out a few spots where I've taken some measurements of the factory thickness of the rail. And what I've basically done here is, is I've set my verniers up onto the rail. I've marked it so I can always come back to that point um, as a reference. And I've just done that in a few spots through the whole rail. So obviously we've got 70 mil thickness here, 68 from this point here, 70 here, 70 here, 70 here, 65 here and 62 back here. Um, and what that's basically going to do is that'll give me a sort of a datum so I can then take my 20 mil from that but I can also um, uh, add or subtract away from that 20 mil so I can keep the cut that I'm doing straight on the rail because obviously if I measure out um, 20, hill, uh, 20 mil here that's then going to be 50 but if I do it back here it's going to be 42 mil. So obviously it's not going to have the rail um, straight. It's going to follow the factory shape of the rail. I can't have that. I need to have the rail cut straight for this, for the tubs that I'm going to be fitting. Um, and yeah. So basically what I'm just going to go do now is I'm just going to follow through all of what I basically just said. And, um, and yeah, then I'll, uh, I'll be able to give myself a little bit more of um, a few more reference points and then I will follow through with the tape line of where I'm going to cut. Hopefully that explains it. Alright, so I've just got this marked out. Obviously I've taken, um, measured out from where I need to be. With the, uh, with the, with this fella. Probably the easiest way of saying it. Um, and then, yeah, I've just ran, ran the tape along those little uh, reference lines here that I've given myself. And I mean, if you're unsure, just give it a bit of a visual check. Um, sometimes you can get your measurements wrong and, you know, if you just go ahead and cut it because, you know, you think that the measurement's right, um, it's not always right. Sometimes you do make mistakes. So that's why I like to, to run the tape along the rail, um, give it a good visual inspection. Um, and yeah, if nothing looks right, maybe run another bit of tape somewhere else. And you know, if that looks right, measure again, mark it again. Um, and yeah, see if you've gone wrong somewhere. But I think I'm looking pretty well on this one. Like I was saying before, I'm going to take the 20 mil out, um, or at least flush with the, with the spring mount. And then I'm gonna take a little bit further um, just because Front and back is really where you need the more clearance. Um, but also you still need to keep the, um, the rail pretty straight. So yeah, I went up having to shave a little bit off the spring mount, but that's not a big deal. Um, but yeah, like I said, just give it a good visual um, look over and hey, look, if it doesn't look straight, go again. It's only um, texture and tape at this point, so nothing permanent. All right, so I've notched the rail 20 mil and I've kept the rail straight. Now, that would be fine for a 29550, but because I'm going to be running a 32550, I'm going to take another 10 mil out, which is why I've then marked in again and then run my tape through like such. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. I've just, because I've already done the other side, I sort of cheated a little bit and I've just measured off the, um, the factory 
sort of pick up points and stuff. Um, so the same sort of way I did it the, uh, the first time around with the 20mm notch, but I've just, yeah, basically just measured the width between like these spots here and then here. So yeah, it's, um, it's all coming together. I'll, uh, I'll cut that out and then I'll start on the floor pan side of it. All right, so I've got the floor pan all marked out. Now, the approach that I did on this, I've sort of taken a, a page from, uh, I think it was John Dodge. Well, it was one of the Dodge brothers. I think that's what his name was. And um, if you want to find an easy way to do something, get a lazy man to, to, uh, to try and do it. So what I did was, was I basically just measured up from this point here, drilled a few 1 8 holes in a few spots. Actually, I don't think that one was one, but anyway. Um, and then basically that's given me some points where I can just run my tape from. So obviously there's one there, there's one there, and then there's another one right here. So that's given me my straight line. And then I've basically just ran the square from this bit of tape to this point here. And same with the back here. So that should give me my width um, to match the chassis rail now that that's trimmed down. <laughs> Alrighty, so I've got that rail sorted out, top and bottom, well 95% anyway, might need a little bit of a tickle up here and there, but this is what I'm going to focus my attention on now, so I'm going to start rolling this wheel arch lip around flush with the rest of the quarter panel. I've just gone through with the metal conditioner and uh, then cleaned it up, well through primed it, and now I'm going to start getting ready to hammer this slip over. All right, so here we are. This is about a week later since the last little bit of work that I did. Uh, I think the last bit that you probably would have seen me do is uh, fold this wheel arch lip. Obviously still got the dog leg to do, but um, sort of tossing up whether or not I just replace that dog leg with one that I make up. But anyway, I've got the wheels all um, sorted out. So that's my, uh, that's my homemade diff jig doing its job. And what that is, is just two cut down banjo axles slipped into a bit of pipe with some nuts welded on and then I use the uh, the bolts screw in because obviously there's a hole on the other side of that nut um, and that holds the axles in place so that's uh that's that one there sorry about the shaking this fellas um but yeah it's um pretty happy with it all still a little bit here and there that I'll probably got to give a little bit of a tickle up um just on the rail side of things but it's um it's a start I suppose This is my uh, 20 mil bit of, uh, bit of wood that I used to just slip in between the, the tire and the rail itself. So that's what gives me my 20 mil clearance. 
um, pretty consistently. Basically what I do is um, with my diff jig, I sort of, I leave that loose um, and I'll adjust the wheel all the way out until it's touching the wheel arch lip. Grab my bit of wood, slide that in between the tire and the rail, and then basically just push the wheel in um, and then tighten up the nuts on my little homemade diff jig there. And that sort of locks it in place and I'll do that on both sides. Um, and yeah, that pretty much gives me my diff length. So yeah, that's, um, it's very handy. Um, it didn't really take me a whole lot to make that up and I've, obviously I've used it on the other um, tubbed car that I've done. Um, I've used stuff like this in, in the past, but yeah, that's just the one that I made. Um, yeah, pretty happy with it all. Wheels look pretty good underneath it. Um, took a little bit of time just getting the axle stands at the right height. I did actually, I started playing around with this um, a week ago before I took a little bit of time off. Because um, yeah, I was crawling underneath the car and I had the back door open and um, yeah, smacked my head right on this corner of the door. So yeah, it left me with a little bit of a bump and I sort of just went, you know, I'm just gonna give cars um, a little bit of a break. And uh, yeah, here we are back into it again. All right, so that's a wrap up for this one, guys. Hope you love it. Um, I'm really enjoying it. This is actually turning out really good, so I'm sort of happy with that. I was a little bit here and there with these um, wheels and tires, but yeah, I'm, so I'm really happy with how everything's turning out. Um, and yeah, hopefully we can uh, finish this one off in the near future. So if you stick around, um, I'm constantly posting new videos every week. Um, not necessarily on this one. I've got other stuff that I'm doing um, around the place, but um, yeah. Until next time, guys. Cheers.